In this tutorial, I'll show you how to use the V-Ray renderer and how to set up a render under Render Setup. So first go to Rendering, Render Setup. And the first thing you want to make sure is that you have V-Ray set up as your renderer. So go to the Common tab and then to where it says Assign Renderer. And under Production, you want to select the little Settings button, hit V-Ray Advanced, OK. And then you should make sure that your Material Editor is also V-Ray. So you want to have Production and Material Editor set up as V-Ray. The next thing you'll want to do is make sure if you're rendering a single frame that you have single setup, um, that you have the uh, view set up so that'll render the entire window as opposed to crop which will render just a portion of the window. You also want to change your output size so you want your, to make sure your resolution is high enough that when you print it uh, the quality will still be there so usually um, you want to be somewhere around 2000, 3000 but you should really find the pixel size in Photoshop and input those values here. So this is pixel dimension, not inches or anything. Um, next you want to make sure that um, under V-Ray that you have your image sampler set up. So usually I'll, by default it's on adaptive subdivision but usually I'll set it to adaptive DMC. It seems to be the best average renderer so adaptive DMC. Um, under environment you can make sure your environment and reflections are on and if you're using an HDRI map you'd want to plug that map in here and here um, but for now we'll just leave them blank and make sure they're both on. Um, you can just make sure these other things are all set uh, according to their defaults. Next you want to select indirect illumination and you want to make sure this is on. So this is the secondary and, and primary bounces. So without these you only have one direct light and you won't have the first bounce which is a primary bounce and the second bounce. So this adds the sort of overall um, ambient lighting to a scene. Without this it would be a very harsh light. So in general the default is radiance and map. I'm going to set mine to radiance and light cache. Uh, it's just a faster renderer. Under light cache, I'll increase my subdivisions to 2500. This will increase the quality just a little bit. You can also increase the sample size to 0 0.01. If you're doing a really high quality render, you can change this to 0 0.005, uh, but really 0 0.01 seems to be good enough. I'll also click show calc phase, which will just show the, the map building. Um, under a radiance map, uh, high is going to be pretty high for a, a initial render. So usually I'll set this at medium and render my initial passes at medium and then when I want to render my final rendering I'll switch this back to high but all the default settings are fine again I'll, I'll select show calc phase which will just show the map being built um, and that's all for this menu next is the settings and there shouldn't be much we need to change here if you want to just globally increase the quality you can change this global subdivision multiplier so right now it's at one if I select two it's going to increase um, everything double all of my settings double so it'll make it twice as crisp but it's also going to take exponentially longer so usually you don't want to fuss with this but if you want to uh, really make everything better you can increase this to two but you're really going to quadruple your rendering time under render elements, uh, this is where you can add uh, different channels. So if you want to add, for example, the material ID, which is always a good idea, that will allow you to select numbers for each material you're using. So if you open up your material editor, each of these materials has a number assigned to it. So if you select one and then choose a number and choose a different number for each material, um, those materials will render out as a separate channel that you can then use in Photoshop to turn on and off uh, layers and crop out different materials without having to re-render everything. Um, and so that's the basics for render setup in V-Ray.